Hi, welcome to Solution Chemistry. My name is Dr. English. Today we're going to talk about classifying solutions and rate of dissolving. Specifically, we're going to look at basic solution types, saturated solutions, unsaturated solutions, supersaturated solutions, and factors affecting the rate of dissolving along with gases dissolving in solution. Let's talk about some basic types of solutions. You can have your classic solid liquid solution where you have your solvent being something like water and you're adding solute like sodium chloride. You can have a liquid liquid solution. Say you add food coloring to water. You can also have a solid solid solution like many type of metals, 24 karat gold, 12 karat gold, where you have primarily one metal mixed with another metal. You can have gas liquid solutions, something like carbon dioxide dissolved in water. Think about all the sodas that you might drink. These are all examples of gas liquid solutions. And finally, the air that you breathe is a gas gas solution, primarily nitrogen, but we also have things like oxygen and trace amounts of other gases mixed in with it like carbon dioxide. Saturated, unsaturated, and supersaturated solutions. A saturated solution is a solution that contains the maximum amount of solute that can dissolve at a given temperature and pressure. And that's really important to think about the given temperature. Another way of stating this idea is that a saturated solution is one that is in dynamic equilibrium with excess solute. If a solid solute is added to a solution already saturated with that solute, the added solid does not dissolve. Basically what we see in this type of solution is that some of our solute is constantly dissolving into the solvent, while some of that solute that has been dissolved is recrystallizing back into a solid. And we're gonna talk about this more in class. Unsaturated solutions contain less solute than a saturated solution. So from this FET simulation that you can see below, we're adding strontium phosphate in different shakes. And as we add it in, this ionic compound is separating automatically into strontium ions and phosphate ions. Additional solute can be added to an unsaturated solution until saturation is reached. And we see it right here. As that last shake goes in, those particles are not fully dissolving. So we have some excess solute on the bottom of our screen, while we also have other particles that have been dissolved. Supersaturated solutions. Supersaturated solutions are very unstable. It contains more dissolved solid than a saturated solution will hold at the same temperature. Adding a single crystal of the solid present in the solution will cause immediate precipitation, as you can see in this image right here, of the excess solid until the solution reaches the saturation point, which is pretty cool to see. A vibration, just jiggling it a little bit, through the solution may also cause precipitation, and I'm going to show you that right now. So this is a supersaturated solution of sodium acetate. A rod is inserted into this supersaturated solution and just nudging it enough to cause precipitation. So we could see that over time, this whole flask, this whole round bottom flask here is going to turn completely solid as this supersaturated solution solidifies. Factors affecting the rate of dissolving. Solids dissolving in a liquid with a focus on temperature. Solids dissolve more rapidly in liquids at higher temperatures as opposed to liquids at lower temperatures. For example, sugar dissolves more rapidly in hot tea than in iced tea. Higher temperatures cause the solvent particles to move faster, thus increasing the rate of the dissolving process. Most solids are more soluble at higher temperatures. That is, in most cases, more solid will dissolve in water at 90 degrees Celsius than in water at 25 degrees Celsius. And again, we're gonna look at this more in class. Solids dissolving in a liquid focus on surface area. Since the dissolving process occurs at the surface of the solid being dissolved, the greater the amount of surface area exposed to a solvent, the faster the dissolving will occur. For example, sugar that is ground up into small crystals will dissolve faster than sugar that is in a lump. 
the crystals have much larger surface area exposed to water molecules. So if we look at it, the difference between powdered sugar, granulated sugar, or sugar cubes, powdered sugar, because it has more surface area, is going to dissolve much more rapidly in water than granulated sugar or a sugar cube. Solids dissolving in a liquid with a focus on stirring. Stirring removes newly dissolved particles from the solid surface and continuously exposes the surface to fresh solvent. So I just added some copper two sulfate to water and I'm stirring it rapidly, like super rapidly, crazy rapidly. And as I'm stirring it, I'm exposing new surface area from those particles. And over time, if I stir it enough, it will be completely dissolved, as you can see here. Gas is dissolving in a liquid. Temperature. The solubility of a gas in a liquid typically decreases as the temperature increases. Pressure makes gases more soluble. Let's look at this in more detail. High pressure forces carbon dioxide gas into water to make soda. It makes carbon dioxide more soluble. When you open the cap on a pop bottle, there is less pressure on the soda. The soda fizzes, as we can hear right here, and the carbon dioxide escapes. The gas becomes less soluble under low pressure. So inside that can, there was high pressure because it was a closed system. And if I had it in the refrigerator, low temperature. So the gas was soluble in the liquid. As soon as I opened that can, you could hear that carbon dioxide escaping. And as soon as I poured it into the beaker, which of course I won't be drinking because that would be ridiculous, you can hear that carbon dioxide coming out of the solvent and into the atmosphere. So what did you learn? We talked about basic solution types saturated solutions, unsaturated solutions, supersaturated solutions, factors affecting the rate of dissolving, and finally, gases dissolving in solution. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.